So a lot of folks have a really difficult time with uh, camera animation, myself included, uh, before I worked on this project. Uh, it's really difficult to make smooth camera moves, um, keep the animation uh, focused on you know, what's going on in the frame rather than the camera itself. If it's really jittery or if it's not, if you're creating too many keyframes and the camera's sort of jumping around all over the place. So in this um, part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you the type of camera rig that we created just to really help us um, keep things very clean and keep the animation fluid um, and not draw too much attention to the camera. So the first step that we're going to do is to create a camera. So go to your Create panel and select Cameras and let's create a free camera. And I'm just going to move over here so we can see what we're doing. So there's our free camera. And the next thing that we're going to do is create the dummy object. Because it's a rig, we're going to actually link it to a dummy object. So go back to your Create panel, select Helpers, and let's just create a dummy object right there. So once we have the dummy object, let's um, actually turn on our snap angles and we're going to rotate the camera. So uh, up here in your snapping options, just select Angle Snap Toggle. Then we're going to go and select our rotation tool and basically just uh, rotate 90 degrees so that it's facing the dummy. And the next thing that we're going to do is align the, the camera to the dummy object. So here's your align tool and we've got the camera selected and we're just going to align it to the dummy object and make sure that it's pivot point and it's XYZ and we'll say OK. And now I can move that camera back. I'll just do a top view so you can see what I'm doing here. Now the camera's just, it, it doesn't really matter how far at this point, just make sure that it's kind of in front of the in front of the dummy. So the next thing that we'll do is link the camera to the dummy object. So over here is the Select and Link tool. Click and drag once you see that, once you see this, um, this icon over the camera, click and drag to the dummy object and then you'll see that, um, that little icon pop up again. So now when we select the dummy object, we can see that the, that the camera is following uh, the dummy object. So with this uh, camera rig, there's actually a lot of flexibility and control that you can get just with this very simple setup of the camera being um, linked to a dummy object. So for example, I can you know, move this around and just animate this as though it's a polygon box. It can follow something, it can, it can move along a path, uh, very, very easy to control. Um, now, with the rotation, um, we can simply orbit around objects and also create keys, keyframes, and you know very easily control where that camera is going to go. Now, if I change the coordinates from world to local, what that's going to do is give me an added control. If I rotate along the local, I have an added control of tilt, uh, which will give you me a nice even distributed rotation there. I don't have to worry about positioning it or creating the proper arc or anything like that. It just follows the follows the dummy. And finally, the, the last piece of, of control that I can get is with the actual camera. So once again, if I change the move um, coordinate to local, so it's following the local axis of the of the camera, I can get a really nice sort of truck or dolly in, like it's just moving really nicely along that um, axis. And so I can get right in there and have really nice movement while simultaneously moving this guy around, you know, if I wanted to um, do some complicated moves, but everything's going to stay fluid. And just by flipping through these, uh, these different coordinates, um, there's actually quite a lot of control. Now, if I want to take that rig and actually take it one step further and have even more precise control um, over the animation, what I can do is, is create a look at constraint and create another point for the camera to be constrained to. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to, this, uh, to, the, to these helper objects and I'm actually going to create a point this time. 
just like so. I'm going to change it to from cross to a box so I can actually see it. And maybe I'll adjust the size just a little bit to make it a bit bigger. Now I'm also going to link this point to the dummy like we did with the camera. And I'm also going to align it to the dummy object. So I'm just going to oops, select the dummy object. And the same thing, X, Y, Z, and pivot point. Once we've got that point and everything connected to the dummy and everything's following it, now what we can do is create a controller on the camera to follow that point. So first we'll select the camera, go to the motion panel, which is this little uh, circle with the little lines around it. Under the assign controller, find rotation and select assign controller, which is this little button just above that. And we're going to find in this list that popped up, we're going to select the look at constraint and just hit OK. So now when we go into the parameters, we're going to go over here. It's where it says look at constraint. I'm going to select add look at target. And I'm going to select the point that we just created. Oops. And it'll pop up here in the, li in the list. And as you can see, the camera is actually facing the complete wrong direction, and that's okay. We're going to fix that right now. So right here where it says select look at, look at axis, let's change it to Z and flip. Now it's still upside down, so we're going to go down to source up node alignment, and we're going to select Y and then we're going which has already been selected and then we're going to change align to up node axis to Z. So now it's going to follow the Z axis for up and down. So just to demonstrate how this camera rig works together, I have set up um, the buildings that we looked at before and I've color coded a couple of them just to indicate um, a focal point for the rig to animate around. So uh, now I've selected the main dummy. And you can see that I've already added some keyframes. So this is where it's going to begin. Uh, I've got a rotation there. And it holds there for a little bit. And then the camera is going to move to the next purple building and do another orbit. So that's the majority of how we animated a lot of our, uh, a lot of our camera animations in the video. Now what I'm going to show you is how we can use the point. So this point is basically there to uh, create some kind of ant anticipating animation. So uh, while the camera is holding here, you may want to anticipate the next camera move. And the way to do that would be to select this, uh, this look at constraint that we created earlier. Now I'm just going to change this, um, this coordinate back to world view. And you can see I've already created a frame here. This is, you know, this is just the starting frame. And I'm, I'm putting it there so that it will line up exactly with the dummy. And then about halfway, you know, you might want to anticipate this move. Maybe it should go a little bit earlier. Oops. First we have to turn the auto key on. So just before it starts to move, you may want to have the camera anticipate that movement by just looking ahead a touch and then it will come back. At the, at the next focal point. So I'll show that to you again. As the camera's rotating, you're going to anticipate the next camera move with this look at constraint as it looks ahead, and then it will go back to the dummy. So the way that I've done that is I've already created two, two keyframes, and basically in between that is, is where I've created the new frame, the new uh, keyframe where it's moved so that it will go back exactly where it was in the original position. So just a couple more tips about camera animation before we move on to state sets. And that is to always keep in mind to keep previewing your animation as you're building it. So for example here, while I'm animating the, 
the camera, I would always be checking in with the actual camera view to make sure everything's looking good and vice versa. So if I'm moving the camera around while I'm in the viewport, the camera viewport, I want to make sure that everything's looking okay in my perspective or if I've got an orthographic uh, top view that I'm just checking out all the animation and the trajectories. So over time, your scene is going to get quite dense, full of objects, textures, lighting, and animations going on. And Max is going to have a hard time keeping up with it and previewing it in real time. So the best way to uh, preview is to actually create a preview. And it's really simple to do. I'm just going to show you here in this window. If you just go over to this little plus sign in the corner and click on it, Go down to Create Preview and Create Animated Sequence File. So in this preview window, you've actually got a lot of options to play around with. Firstly, you can choose your preview range. You can either do the active time segment or you can choose the range of animation you'd like to preview. Uh, you've got display filters, so if you only want to see lights or you want to see shapes, cameras, you can select whichever items you'd like to preview. Uh, frames per second, I'm just going to leave at 30 frames per second, but you can come in here and change to what, customize whatever you're working with. Um, image size, I'm just going to leave super small because it, it is a preview and I'm not that concerned about the resolution. Uh, we've got visual styles down here and you can choose whatever rendering level you'd like. So shaded, realistic, you could even do a, a wireframe. Uh, this is really handy, you know, if you just however quick you want to get your your preview out and to the visual style that you'd like and then you've also got some other options down here now the overlay section is actually very handy uh, we used it quite a lot uh, first of all the safe frames um, is is handy if you're if you're rendering to broadcast so if you need to know where your image is going to get cut off by the film or the television uh, the next two are the ones that we use the most, and that is frame numbers and camera view name. Um, those, those two overlays together are really helpful when you're editing together uh, multiple camera renders. Um, when you're planning out your cuts between one camera to the next, you are going to want to play around with it a bit and make sure the timing works and the cut works and uh, the best way to do that is to just create previews of your camera and then put them together in something like uh, Premiere or After Effects uh, and just you know preview them play around with the timing and then you can quickly come back to Max change your camera if you need to and and then go back and forth very quickly uh, when, once it's all set up and you're happy with it, then you know exactly what the frame numbers are and the camera name and how to set up your renders. So when you do that final big, big render, you're not going to be wasting a lot of time. You know exactly what you want and exactly which camera and frame numbers you need. So down here, uh, you can choose your output as well. So the default is set to Microsoft Video, and that's fine. Uh, you can open this up, and you can you can play around with your compression. You can you know choose which type of compressor you'd like, and you can f uh, further configure. I usually just leave this all as as um, as default uh, because I just want a simple preview. So the other thing to double check before you hit create is just make sure that this render viewport name corresponds with the actual camera name that you have that you want to preview. So once everything is set up the way you the way you would like your render to be previewed, let's just hit create and we'll see the preview being built right in the middle of our screen very quickly and very low res but it's perfect for a preview and in a moment it will pop up on the screen uh, as an AVI within a player so there we go and there's our camera move and I just wanted to point out uh, here's the name of the camera that we asked it to to create the overlay and here's the frame numbers and the frame numbers will correspond to where it is on this timeline down here so I just wanted to point that out so you can see how it rendered out 
Now you're probably wondering where this file is located and if you open up your project file um, and just look under the preview previews folder so here we've got all of the project folders just open up your preview and you'll find the the file here. Now if you're doing multiple uh, previews like I mentioned and stringing them together uh, for a rough cut or a rough edit make sure that you rename this file to whatever makes sense for your project. Um, if you don't, it's going to the next preview you do is going to overwrite overwrite the the underscore scene file that it originally made. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you're going to be overwriting that underscore scene file every time. So we've just scraped the surface of camera animation. I know there's a lot more to it, but I did want to show you uh, the the camera rig that we found most useful, and also a couple of the techniques that really helped us out. So I hope they'll help you out too. Uh, that's it for the camera animation, so let's move on to state sets.